All right, you can see things are progressing along here, and I am continuing with the weathering process. Um, I decided to push aside now the MIG weathering solutions and rely rather on pastels and the Tamiya weathering kit. The main reason is because the pigments are just not dark enough to do much with these dark green areas. They actually worked well with the lighter areas, as I showed you a little earlier there, but just weren't doing much for this. So what I decided to do was I did apply some, but I went ahead and furthered the process with utilizing pastels and Tamiya weathering kit. Also proceeding along with some more paint chipping there, utilizing just a brush to apply some of the areas here, but also just utilizing a sponge to help out with this just to make some finer areas, and that is working out really well. So it's one thing I forget about doing is just using sponges to create this type of effect. It's been very effective. Moving along here with the arms now, uh, you can see I've applied some of the decals, and one thing I want to point out with the decals now is I really thought the decal sheet was not going to be very useful here. Uh, the decal sheet was pretty old, and I initially had put some of the decals into water and just had a heck of a time separating them. They were pretty useless, so I thought uh, I would give it one last-ditch effort and just utilize this uh, liquid decal film to restore old decals. Uh, it's made by Microscale. And you just brush it on, allow it to dry. And uh, what I did was I just uh, put some of the decals in the water. I really wasn't expecting it to uh, do much, but... They definitely separated and allowed me then to apply them accordingly. I did try printing my own decal sheet here, but uh, that did not work out too well because this is clear decal paper for one thing. So when you applied the yellow colored areas, they just blended in here with this dark color. So thankfully, we we're able to salvage those decals from the old sheet. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and move along, and I'll show you some of the weathering process here as I uh, apply that to the arms. Uh, the idea here now is most of the weathering and chipping is going to be concentrated towards the bottom of the mech suit because obviously the feet are in contact with the ground and so forth. But as you go up the mech suit, the weathering tends to get a little lighter and uh, so you're not going to see as much chipping here on the upper parts, uh, including the arms. All right, so let's go ahead and continue on. Alright, you can see I have the lower half of the suit assembled, getting ready now to work with the upper half and complete assembly there. Uh, still have some decals to apply as well. I want to take a second just to show you again how nice these ammo solutions work with helping out with surface detailing. We had a line here that I needed to fill in, and so I just used the ammo wash to do that. Once that was dried, I used the odorless thinner to uh, wipe away any excess, and uh, sure enough, it left behind a nice sharp line. So these are great to work with. I've been impressed with them so far. I definitely look forward to using them in the future. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and move forward now with the uh, upper half. But rather than spend time on this video with that, I'm going to actually move us into the display stand because I definitely have some ideas I want to show you there. Uh, one other thing before we move on to display stand, uh, as you recall, the detailing set came with this modeling pigment. And basically what it is is um, a fine ground uh, pigment dust that you can apply to your models. And this is finer than what you can get with grinding pastels. So my goal here is to make the feet look dusty uh, since it's constantly walking in a um, dry, dusty environment. So um, I've already applied some to um, the feet here. Let me just show you how this works. This side has actually already been treated with both the pigment dust and what we call a pigment binder. So uh, let's go ahead and move on to the opposite side. And uh, what I've done here was I've applied the pigment by simply taking a brush and um, dipping it into the pigment. And really all you do is just brush it on like this. And um, once you get it into place, and by the way, you can vary the look from a very heavy accumulation uh, to, as you can see here, just a fine dusting. So I wanted to uh, accumulate some along these 
um, lines here, these uh, grooves, and also at the base of this giant screw here. But then um, from here, I wanted just a light dusting of the pigment, and uh, it's really all going to be concentrated just along the feet here. And this, of course, is the back side. Now, with this side, I've already applied the pigment binder, and uh, with that, all you do is you just dip your brush into the pigment binder, which I've done with this little brush here, and you just gently touch the areas that you have the pigmentation applied. And you just kind of go along like this, and then you just let it dry. Now, initially when you put it on, it's going to darken everything, but when it dries, you can see it looks just like it did when I first applied it. But the pigment now will not move as easily, so that way you can keep it on your model. All right, so I'm going to keep working on this, and as I said, we'll go ahead now and move on to the display base. Of course, I'll show you the completed model with the base here uh, very shortly. So the method I'm going to be following here, you can find on the YouTube channel, Dr. Faust's Paint Clinic. And he has all kinds of tutorials on how to create different bases, and uh, one of which is a cracked earth base. So uh, the anime series that uh, our mech suit can be found on is called uh, Fang of the Sun, Dogrum, and it takes place on a desert planet. So I figured it'd be cool to have our model kit displayed on a base that resembles an arid environment. So the materials we're going to need for this, this is plastic wood filler. We need some ink. And we're going to use this textured paint by Citadel. The color is a ghrelin earth. There are a few other supplies we're going to need as we go along, but uh, these are the basic ones here. So let's go ahead and get started. All right, so first thing we're going to do is take our wood filler and we can combine it with some ink just to make it darker. Let's squeeze some of this stuff in here. All right, so next thing we're going to do is we're going to apply this to our base in kind of an uneven fashion. Just, uh, it's going to give us some different areas of height and relief here. All right, so uh, one reason for the wood filler is because apparently uh, it interacts better with this product here. Uh, the gentleman who did the tutorial uh, noted that he typically uses plaster for these types of bases, but it didn't interact real well. It pulled off when he was using this material here, so it seemed like the wood filler did a much better job. Now the other thing I'm going to do is sand some rocks here that we're going to glue to our base. So um, I'm just basically sanding one side and that way they'll sit flush against the base. And I'm going to attach the rocks here to the base with super glue. Alright, so it's completely dried. I just let it sit overnight. And one correction I did want to make before I go on here is this is not ink. Uh, the gentleman who did the tutorial suggested using ink you'll get a darker uh, color to the wood filler, but this is just going to have to do. Uh, the next step now is going to go ahead and paint it with a black olive mixture, and uh, once that's dried, we will apply the Citadel textured paint. All right, so it's all dry now, and um, I did, by the way, add a little bit more wood filler in the center here where he'll be standing. My initial idea was to leave it exposed, but uh, this texture paint is supposed to crack, and I figured it would be better if it cracks around here to expose the wood filler versus the wood grain of the, um, of the base there. Alright, so now we're going to go ahead and apply this, and essentially you just brush it on. And uh, the thicker you brush it, uh, the bigger the cracks will be, apparently. So we're going to go ahead and apply it and let that dry, and let's see what happens. Okay, and here we now have pretty much the completed base. I may do a few more things with it. I'm sorry I didn't tape further as I went along here, but I really wasn't sure this was going to turn out. Uh, so basically, after I laid down the uh, textured paint, I waited for it to dry, only to find that uh, the cracks were extremely small. The chipped areas were just not looking right. So I thought I was going to have to just start all over, but what I did before I scraped everything off was I just added thicker areas of the uh, textured paint, and we got uh, bigger cracked areas. So I decided to work with this, and all I did was um, apply Tester's sand 
um, I just airbrushed it and then I used a dark wash uh, to darken up some of the areas in between and uh, ended up with this. So I should point out that that was indicated in the tutorial that I watched and he mentioned that if you want larger cracked areas you definitely have to apply thicker amounts of the textured paint. So that is a mistake I made at the beginning and I just really wasn't sure how thick I needed to apply it. Uh, so a lot of these areas you can see the smaller cracked areas here uh, the textured paint was just not thick enough and certainly when I went back over it and applied uh, a much thicker amount in these areas we ended up with these larger cracks. Overall though I have to say that uh, the cracks seem to be in scale with the model so um, I may do a few more things with this maybe something with pastels or I'm, I'm not sure yet or I just may leave it like this. Uh, either way I'm gonna wrap a couple things up with this but I am ready now to show you the completed project. All right, everyone, so it's now time to reveal the completed project. And here we are. So again, this is a combat armor suit that is seen in a Japanese anime series that was made in the early 80s called Fang of the Sun Dugrum. And this is the combat armor used by the Earth Federation. This is a 172 scale representation and stands about six and a half inches high. And of course, as I've mentioned, this is a first for me to put together a kit like this. Uh, the whole genre of mech armor and Gundams uh, present a whole new possibility and lots of different potential of weathering and battle damage and a uh, number of different designs that you can work with. So I certainly see the appeal. And of course, another first was to be able to use the weathering uh, solutions by Ammo. Uh, Mig Jimenez is the guy who designed all these and still continues to put out new products. Also, I had a lot of fun making this base. This was the first time I ever tried a cracked earth uh, base like this. And uh, so for the most part, it actually worked out pretty well. Um, again, you can follow tutorials by uh, Dr. Faust Painting Clinic. And if you look up cracked earth displays, you'll find other tutorials as well. This is not the only method available uh, to create this type of display. So overall, I'm pretty happy with the way the model turned out. I know there were a lot of seams to work with. You can see back here, I left these seams untouched along the detailing there. I was just afraid that I would wear away at the detailing. Um, I was able to uh, work with the upper and lower seams for the most part, uh, so hopefully that just looks like it's part of the detailing. Uh, the plastic uh, was a bit brittle. Someone had forewarned me with older kits that does happen. So if you ever do work with older kits, just take care. The plastic can crack. I had a couple of mishaps here, including the pin that holds in this arm and there was another mishap with the armor down this way, but luckily those were fixable. And also with the older kit came, of course, the decals, and uh, those were usable in the end. Luckily with the uh, liquid uh, restoring solution from Microscale, so those were very helpful in preserving uh, the decals and basically salvaging them. I really didn't think uh, I was going to be able to use them at all. All right, so that pretty much does it here with this project. If you have any questions, feel free to contact me here on my YouTube channel or at initialthemodeler at gmail.com. As usual, thanks for watching, and I will see you then in the next one. Take care.